Hey everybody, Ron Bielefeld, Whistling Wings Photography. Got another video for you today, and we're gonna talk about ISO invariants when it comes to the Canon R5. Now, if any of you have ever looked into ISO invariants in Canon cameras in the past, you'll know that past Canon cameras were definitely not ISO invariant. The Canon R5, this is a big difference now, is ISO invariant to a certain extent and I want to talk about why that could be important to us as bird photographers, as wildlife photographers. How does this apply? How could this potentially apply to how we go about taking our images when we're in the field? So if you're interested in knowing more about this, stay tuned. Okay, so let's start out by defining what ISO invariance is. What ISO invariance is, is the ability to take an image at a certain shutter speed, a certain f-stop, and shoot it at 6400, let's say, and that be the correct exposure. It looks good in the camera. It's the right luminosity in the camera, things like that. But then leave your shutter speed and leave your aperture the same, but decrease your ISO under exposing the image by several stops, let's say. Let's say you shot it at ISO 800. And then in post-processing, you look at it. Of course, it's going to be too dark, but you bring it up that the number of stops to equal, let's say, ISO 6400, and you won't see a difference in the noise, the color accuracy, the overall image quality of the image by doing that. If you have a camera that you can do that, if you can underexpose by changing your ISO lower, but then bringing it up in post-processing to what the exposure you would like to have had in camera, and you don't see a penalty in increased noise and things like that, then you have what is called an ISO invariant camera. And there are some advantages to that and some ways that you can apply that in your photography. <clears throat> so in order to do this, I think we should paint a scenario, kind of imagine now, use your imagination, and put yourself into a situation where it's rather dim light. Maybe you're shooting in the rainforest somewhere, maybe it's cloudy, a bit misty or something like that, and it's windy. A little windy, doesn't look too bad. I think I'll go. Let's say, so the branches, stuff that birds would sit on are moving around, so your subject's gonna be moving around at least a little bit. So the scenario would be you want a relatively high shutter speed. You don't wanna be shooting at anything like one one hundredth of a second, more like one one thousandth of a second to stop the movement of the bird sitting on a, on a waving branch. And you're shooting the Canon R5, and let's say the new 100 to 500 lens, which isn't the fastest lens in the world. And if you put a 1.4 times teleconverter on there at, to get the 700 millimeters and you're shooting these smaller uh, songbirds, passerine type birds that are perching, you might have <clears throat> a minimum aperture or the fastest aperture you can set would be like F10 at 700 millimeters. So you've got a kind of a tough scenario. And in the past with a camera, let's say the 1DX2, which was not ISO invariant at all, you would be forced to shoot ISO, let's say 6400, 6, F10 at 1 1,000th of a second. You could get a decent exposure with that. And I will go ahead and switch over to some, to some images now to, to depict this. So this image here is taken at ISO 6400. F10 at 1 1,000th of a second with the RF 100 to 500 with the 1.4 times teleconverter attached to it. And this is what you get. A fairly bright exposure, something that you can work with. If we zoom in, you can see how much noise we're getting at 6400 ISO. 
and this is what you would do with an ISO variant camera. There's no sense in doing anything else because if you increase or decrease the the ISO, you're going to increase or decrease the noise, but you're going to have to, uh, if you try to reduce your ISO, for example, you're going to have to reduce your shutter speed and you know you're you're going to risk not getting a, a sharp image so what's the point here well you can shoot at iso 6400 at 1 1000th of a second at f10 if you'd like but there's options now given that this camera is iso invariant let's uh take a look at shooting this at let's say ISO 3200. This is ISO 3200, the actual exposure, right? And if we go ahead and bring that image up by one stop, which would equal ISO 3600, um, then you basically have, because this is an ISO invariant camera, the same amount of noise the same color accuracy, the same overall image quality, if you want to put it that way, as you did is, is if you shot it at ISO 6400. So let's go up and take a look at ISO 1600. Much darker, but again, if you bring that ISO 1600 image up by now two stops, over here and you zoom in you basically have the exact same amount of noise exact same color accuracy pretty much the same image quality as if you shot it at 6400 and you can keep going we can keep going we can shoot at ISO 800 pretty dark bring that up by a full three stops now and we've got much the same noise can compare that down here to the ISO 6400 image. Looks almost identical. Let's go to ISO 400. Woo, dark. Probably wouldn't want to be shooting at this this uh, level. It's hard to uh, even see the bird, but for this example, we'll take a look. If we take a look at this, uh, brought up by a full four stops, and compare that to ISO 6400, basically the same image, same image quality, same amount of noise, same color. Let's go even one step further. How about ISO 200? Now you can barely see the bird, right? But you can bring that up a full five stops and ooh, now things don't look so good. This is where the ISO invariance stops with the Canon R5 is at ISO 200 or so. So you can basically shoot at ISO 400 all the way up to ISO 6400, even higher than that, but for this example, I'm stopping there. And it's pretty much ISO invariant. So you can go from here, ISO 400, all the way to ISO 6400, and you have pretty much the same image quality noise wise color accuracy wise so you say well that that's great it's it's awesome that it's iso invariant in that range or even further but what does that really mean why would you do that why not just shoot at iso 6400 at the same shutter speed and aperture of course when we're doing these comparisons that's that's critically important that everything else stay the same the parameters why not just shoot at ISO 6400? Well, you could, but there are drawbacks to shooting at higher ISOs. And two of them are less dynamic range in your images and also less ability to hold your highlights together if you happen to have a very dynamic setting, a very uh, dynamic composition that you're making where you have really bright areas and really dark areas. Those bright areas are much harder to hold detail in the higher the ISO setting you have in most cameras, including the R5. And so if you have a scenario like that, you might want to pick to shoot, say, at ISO 800 or ISO 1600, something like that, and 
getting the highest dynamic range you can get. Also, preserving any really bright areas uh, with most uh, data there that you can actually uh, work with in post-processing. So those are the two main reasons why you might choose in scenarios like this to shoot lower ISOs than you normally would trying to get the correct exposure in camera and instead choose to underexpose with lower ISOs still being able to keep your shutter speed at one one thousandth of a second to stop your bird that's moving on that on that branch or whatever and then have the ability to uh, bring that image up preserving the highlights and getting the maximum dynamic range that you can possibly get out of that image so that's that's really it in a nutshell the ISO invariance and how it might apply to bird photography I'm applying that now I'm, I'm under exposing more than I ever have with my Canon R5 Canon cameras before I never would underexpose I'd actually o try to overexpose a lot of times because there was no ISO invariance now you've got this as a kind of another tool to think about anyway in working with uh, this uh, this camera and so let's let's just recap real quick this is mostly applicable for dim light scenarios where you're going to have to pump up potentially the ISO to get shutter speeds high enough for things that are moving around in these low light conditions. So it's a great ability to have in your camera to shoot lower ISOs and be able to bring up the image pretty much not worrying about the ISO because of the ISO invariance when you get into those kind of scenarios, especially now with these lenses that are coming out, light, great image quality, like the Canon 100 to 500, and but they're not the fastest lenses in the world. So you're thinking, well, if I'm gonna be at F10 and I need one 1,000th one of a sec, man, I'm gonna have to crank up my ISOs. Well, not necessarily. You can crank up your ISOs, lose some dynamic range, lose the ability a little bit to hold your highlights, or you can just underexpose Keeping one, your one one thousandth of a second in your aperture that you need or have to have or have to use and go ahead and drop your ISO and underexpose and then bring it up in post and you're not going to lose any image quality. So that's it. That's the Canon R5 and ISO invariance. I hope you found this at least a little bit informative. And if you did, please subscribe. It's always nice to get new subscribers. It's what keeps this channel going. And until next time, stay safe, have great light, take great images, and I'll see you soon.